This is courtesy of Resident Advisor, and it features another four, unfortunately, accusations um, levied against Kamal Williams of sexual harassment. And um, RA have done some good work in terms of breaking down and exposing um, some of the things that this guy's allegedly done to people in the scene, behind the scenes, being an artist and a DJ himself. And now they've got four more accusers coming forward and saying some very untoward things about him. So let's come and read through the article. So it says, yeah, following Resident Advisor's recent investigation, the three women accused South London jazz artist Kamal Williams, aka Henry Wu, um, of sexual assault of at least 18 others have come forward to RA. Yo, 18. 18 accusations. God damn it, bro. Guys out here doing the most. Many women didn't wish to speak on record. Some of the alleged victims who did speak to RA expressed feelings of concerns for their safety, requesting identity details and exact locations be withheld. So let's go through the accounts. This person called D was excited to go to Williams Los Angeles concert last year. And it's weird, wild because all of these are recent. It's not like they happened like, you know, many, many moons ago. These are all recent occurrences as well. So this guy has been a monster from day dot. She posted the footage from her gig to her Instagram story and tagged Williams. She said he immediately responded and suggested they go to lunch. I, I always knew people posting these type of things online were either fishing for attention or, you know, just throwing it out there. That whole culture of people posting clips of them listening to DJs and tagging them or whatever, you want to reshare or maybe you want to, you know, you want something else. Um, yeah, it's no surprise. This guy it jumped into the DMs instantly. They met the next day. D said Williams didn't even ask me before kissing her in a park after lunch. She said it took her by surprise, but she kissed him back. Oh, these accounts, man. Whenever these, whenever these accounts go like this, it's always fucking like, God almighty. Now what do you want me to do then? You have this instance where this kid sexually harassed you after the fact, cool. But you already felt a bit weird from the beginning. Your gut feeling told you something was bad, was happening. That wasn't a good thing that he kissed you without asking your permission. You still kiss him back in a moment and then you know what happens happens after the fact and it's like yo sometimes you know you have to be a little bit i don't know whatever let's just continue reading this she said it was a it, it took her by surprise but she kissed him back she uh, then told him that she didn't want to have sex with him she said williams suggested they go back to where he was staying they assumed that the other band members were, oh my god bro come on Somebody kissed you without permission, it doesn't feel good that you kiss them back anyway. In the moment. Cool. You can excuse that. Then they suggest to you that they want to fuck. Now you know what their intentions are. And you're not on that time. So you should maybe leave and go home. You don't. You, they say say come back to mine and you go because you think their band members are gonna be there. D said Williams tried to persuade her into having sex back at his place. She repeatedly said no, told him she was on her period. I said I don't want to have sex with you. You don't have condoms. She said he kept assuring her that he was he was clean. <laughs> oh, pure pure sicko vernacular that isn't it? Sicko vocabulary that isn't it? I'm clean. Don't worry. Trust me. Trust me, bro. D said um, that after Williams continued to plead her for sex, she eventually relented and had sex with him. She recalled him asking if she wanted him to finish inside of her. I was so bro. I don't. I don't know. Can you deem this to be sexual harassment? If he kissed you without permission, you kissed him back. He said you want to fuck, you said no. He took you back to his house anyway. He said let's fuck and you gave in and fucked him. It, does that count as sexual harassment? It sounds like at every point you had the option to just say no and leave. You didn't. And then what he, like, wearing you down is sexual Like, huh? Unless, unless she's going to say there's some sort of force used here. I don't understand this in this situation. This, he sounded like he was on demon time from minute one. You should have ran when he was in the park trying to kiss you. I don't know. This is a this is a weird account. This is what I mean about dance music. I think before I continue with this, there needs to be a reckoning. There needs to be a reckoning and a real adult conversation, a grown up conversation. Maybe I'm not the best place to start and to come with this because I'm going to give it too real. But there needs to be a grown up conversation around consent and around just like hookup culture in dance music and in nightlife in general. There needs to be a really honest conversation about this. Really, truly honest conversation around what consent actually means at nightlife, in nightlife, in that scene where everyone's kind of promiscuous and under the influence and whatever it may be. 
because some of this behavior on both sides is deplorable obviously on his side of being the quote-unquote aggressor and maybe having things happening behind the scenes and no one saying anything and being scared and people protecting you and you know agents are calling people to not say certain things and labels are turning a blind eye and friends are turning a blind eye because he's a famous dj and artist and he can get you guest list and all this sort that behavior all needs to change because you're kind of enabling this behavior and somewhat responsible if that person goes on to rape somebody or something right but there also needs to be some really honest conversation around some of these people and how they engage with DJs and artists. Why are you tagging this person in your story? Are you actually looking to tag them just to kind of give them acknowledgement for their song? Or are you looking for them to actually get in your DM so you can maybe hook up or something? Why are you meeting them in public? Why are you meeting them at all? You know, all of these conversations need to be had, like why are you, you know, not okay with them kissing you, but then kissing them back? All these sort of weird things that only occur in the nightlife-y type of scene, and because maybe the person's an artist or a DJ and you look up to them and think they're a fucking God or something, like this sort of stuff isn't cool because then it makes, like imagine this sort of event happened that's blurry. It then gives a person that's legitimately a monster and maybe a predator the reason and the rationale that it's okay to do what they're doing because one person said yes. Like imagine you wore this person down, right? You convince them to comply. Then the next person that says no, you feel like you can do the same thing you did to a previous girl and it'll be okay so bad man um still when williams wanted to visit d in la again she agreed to see him <sighs> she said she was intrigued by him as an artist and wanted to give him the why is this in this report this discredits everything to be fair this girl sounds like a bit of a bozo i'm not gonna lie not to be offensive but this discredits everything this girl sounds like a bozo D said that she, he had spoken to her at length about his Muslim faith and she was impressed when he told her he didn't drink. That's even worse, to be fair. If this guy is running ragged like this and allegedly raping people and harassing people and all this sort of mad shit and he's doing it stone cold sober, Dalia style, this makes you more of a sicko. There's no excuse of doing it when you're under the influence. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't make it okay. But if you're doing this stone cold sober, you're, doing, you're raping people on Evian, you deserve to be buried under a jail you deserve every bad thing coming your way if you're doing this stone sober d said he acted totally differently on the second date they had a good time and had consensual sex she said she then felt comfortable to accept his invitation to join him in new york so they hook up in london she's not with it but she gives in she she invites him to hook up he invites her to hook up again in la she gives in or she agrees consensually then new york it's like where is the complaint here? <sighs> to accept the position in New York, we're playing another show. But Dee said she was confused by William's behavior on this trip. She asks he didn't attempt to have sex or show her any. <laughs> Just don't go. I don't want to fuck you and don't come on to me, please. Even though we've like. Just don't go in it. Like, honestly. Because it seems like, from what I've been able to see, a lot of abuse in this dance music, once you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. That's what it seems like to me. They're very like aggressive with their shit, from what I'm seeing, reading different accounts of different people. So I feel like if you're a girl in the scene, don't give somebody anything. Because if you give them a little taste, even a little suggestion that it could be on, they're never gonna, they're never going to stop especially under the influence or just whatever in the you know environment that they're in you really can't give i think maybe it applies across a board but i think in nightlife in particular you can't give these guys an inch because i feel like all of these guys have been in situations where they've quote unquote wore somebody down if you're a dude trying to wear anybody down to fuck you is really 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 sick of behavior but i think a lot of these guys have been in the same position where they've done it and it's successful and guys speaking as a man myself we're quite redacted you know, like we're quite binary in our thinking. When one thing goes well, even if it was done in dubious circumstances, we're just going to try and repeat that again to get the same result. So if we meet resistance again and it went well for us last time by saying, no, come on, man, please, please, please. And it worked. We're going to do it. Even though that counts as harassment and coaxing as a little bit weird and the power imbalance, we get it. But I think in this situation, if you have an inkling that this guy could be a bit weird, a bit of a creep, you don't give anyone benefit of the doubt. Even if you like them, you like their music. You don't give anyone the benefit of the doubt, especially when it becomes, 
you know, when there's sex involved and that sort of shit. Because if Bishop is a guy who's going to overpower you, there's no way to you to get away, blah, 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 blah. No one gets a benefit of the doubt. Everyone has suspicion. <laughs> you have to always go into every interaction thinking, okay, this guy could be a weirdo. If they prove you wrong, cool, but no benefit of the doubts. Oh, I just went to, I just went back to his to hang out to go watch Netflix. Like, what? I was warm, so I took off my trousers. Like, what? Like, what are you doing, bro? Like, he already showed you he was on Demon Time. Why are you going, like, why go back? Like, stay away. Danger. Anyway, it continues. Um, she said that she didn't attempt to, she said that he didn't attempt to have sex or show her any affection. She alleged that she saw him snorting a white substance. <laughs> she, she's also a snitch. <laughs> What was she sniffing then? Did she say what she was sniffing? What? What? Come on, man. She alleges that he. She saw him snitching a white substance, and she asked him what it was. <laughs> she said he told her it was ketamine. Oi, ketamine. Big up my ketamine, man. Then K to the death. She accused him of lying to her, having told her he didn't take drugs. She said he told her it was medicine. <laughs> it's for my mental health, babes. It's for my anxiety. <laughs> I'm an artist. I've got anxiety. I'm an introvert. By the way, that whole anxiety thing as well, stop it. There's too many DJs in the scene now who are faking they have autism, faking they have anxiety and whatever. You're just a cunt. Stop it. Stop with the stop with the self-diagnosed ADHD, anxiety, whatever. You're not. You're just a cunt. Like smile. Say hi. You know what I mean? Stop being a cunt. Anyway. She she accused him of lying to her, having told her he didn't take drugs. She, she said he told her it was for medicine. After five unpleasant days in New York, Dee went back to LA and told William she wanted to be friends. Cool. So after, yeah, anyway, whatever. Cool. Weeks later, Dee found out she was pregnant. Whoa. Okay, now it gets dicey. <laughs> now it gets dicey. You let some DJ finish in you because you you like him as a DJ. Then you find out he, he's a druggie and you don't like druggies. And then you find out you're pregnant by this DJ druggie guy. Woo, that's a roller coaster of emotions. D found out she was pregnant and she said she texted Williams to tell him she was angry. The conception date lined up with the date D met Williams when she said he verbally pressured her into unprotected sex. She was in no other sexual relationships at the time, she said. Dee recalled him asking her if she was sure he didn't want to keep the baby. She went on to a doctor to seek an abortion. Oh. Oh, yay, yay, yay. That is dicey, dicey. Oh. After that, he tried to call me. He didn't even ask me what happened. How are you feeling? Did you have an abortion? Dee said. The abortion was so painful, not only physically, but emotionally. I was remembering the first day we met, how I was telling him no, and I was blaming myself because I didn't... No, 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 no. How are you going to... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. She had consensual sex with this guy like twice after the first time. That, what? Why are you remembering the... F why, why would you regret the whole thing? Why are you remembering the first thing? If anything, you should be like, I'm, I'm, I'm upset I've, I ever, ever agreed to meet him in the first place. You should have never met him in that park. What? Okay. Anyway, this guy sounds like a piece of shit anyway, so it is what it is. Um, Talia, another account. Talia described a similar alleged experience after meeting Williams at dinner, at diner, sorry, in Los Angeles. By the end of the night, he'd invited her to come to Chicago with a band. I wonder how many guys in the scene exist who are just cool who say this. It feels like everybody that says stuff like, hey, why don't you come on tour with us? It's always going to be a creep. It's always going to be a rapist. It's always going to be an abuser. I wonder if there's a cool dude who exists in the scene as a DJ who says the line, hey, you should come with us on the next tour. You should hang out. Come out to the like th That must exist, right? There must, be, there must be party boys that like to throw down who aren't dickheads who aren't abusers it must exist but that line sounds like a creepo line that sounds like a the black book of creepo line. i mean in the 101 of being a creep hey man come on come come on because you just met this person why are you invite it's it's almost like you invite someone on holiday hooking up with somebody at the club is one thing i get it but inviting somebody to come on tour with you or to come like like I'm on tour man like you were there I'm going somewhere else like I don't know 
I don't know. I love music and it seemed like a wild, fun and you only live once thing to do. She flew to Chicago and joined Williams and two bandmates in their Airbnb. Already, first mistake. You just met this person, you're going to the Airbnb. And the funny thing about all this stuff, this is all happening like not even in the kind of midst of a party, which makes sense because sometimes your decision-making abilities can be a little bit impaired because of all the drugs and drinks you've had. These are things that have been happening like in like daytime after the fact, like the naivety involved in this sort of stuff is bedazzling. But maybe these kids, these girls involved are super young, but I just don't know. It's like going to someone's house, like, okay, cool. In the, sorry, um, she met the, the two bandmates in the Airbnb. In a bedroom, she said she and William started kissing and began to initiate sex, or he began to initiate sex. She recalled telling Williams, no. so every girl, this guy's got to be a bit of a psycho, isn't it? Because it seems like every experience he's had sexually with girls involves the girl saying no. That's not a good thing, isn't it? It's almost like, you know when people say, if you have to ask a girl's ID, it's probably not a good thing. I think if you're a guy and every sexual experience you've had has started with a girl saying no, you probably have to look at your approach. You probably have to look at what you're doing. You probably have to ask yourself some very in- honest questions and look yourself in the mirror because that's not normal. Every in- every initiation of sex is met with no, no, no. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I don't know, man. You sound like a psycho. Um, she said, no, no, no. I'm on my period. Then the rest happened very fast. He inserted himself in me and probably took a minute. Talia said Williams had penetrated her and ejaculated inside of her. And then it was over. And I'm just stunned. I've never had a guy randomly come in me. I'm not on birth control. So that entire thing happened so fast with no conversation. It was our first time hooking up. It rendered me speechless. Yeah, this sounds, this sounds, this sounds very rapey. This sounds very rapey with a capital R. Jesus Christus. Let's come out William guy. And I don't think we've heard anything from, from his labels. Have his labels dropped Kamal Williams? Is his agency, booking agency representing him? <sighs> Talia barely spoke to Williams for the remainder of her time in Chicago and said that there were horrible vibes between them. Talia said that in order to maintain a de- de-escalated situation and get herself back to safety, I stayed and didn't alter the in- arrangement. I've heard this happening quite often to people who get abused because they're so scared of more abuse. They just comply and kind of turn into a bit of a, you know, they, they become a bit, I guess, docile and, you know, unco- they don't want to have any confrontation, unconfrontational, um, which is also super, super sad because in this situation, you imagine the first thing you want to do is just run and get out of the house as soon as possible. But I guess, you know, the fear and the situation be- belies that. Um, They shared a room for two nights, which she said she only felt safe because her bandmate was sleeping on a couch right outside the bedroom. She said she kept to her side of the bed and that she pushed William's hand away when he tried to touch her crotch one night. Tyler said that William sent her a text on the... You have to be a real sicko, right? Because you know you've done that. As a dude, you, you know deep down what you've done. You know that you've raped that girl. You know that you've done that without her permission. And then you try to still touch her the next day. Tyler said that William sent her a text on the plane ride back on LA asking, are we cool? Did I do something? (laughs) If you have to send that text, you know you did something. Did I do something, you know? Yeah, you raped me, you cunt. Talia said that she responded telling him how upset she was because he had unprotected sex with her and finished inside her without her permission. She said Williams apologized and said he wanted to make it up to her. Please don't tell me she met up with him again. Please don't make me depressed and tell she met up with him again. Please. Tyler took plan B because she was worried she might get pregnant. She said she also found out that she had an had STI and said she wasn't sleeping with anyone. <laughs> so he not only made her pregnant, he gave her an STD. Okay, cool. Talia tried to request $100 from Williams to cover the cost of the pregnancy test. The STI test and medication she was subsequently prescribed. She said he responded to tell her that he would call the next day. He attempted once and she tried to call him back, but they never spoke on the phone or texted again. So she paid out of pocket. Yeah, this guy is a piece of shit. Again, no statement from the agencies, I think, so far. No statement from the booking agencies, the labels, nothing. Or maybe I think Ribbon Section said something. But still, 
they were harboring this guy on their fucking roster for all this time doing all this madness and the london scene is small especially that kind of hipster south london white people with dread scene that people do right um the cafe auto scene all these people ride around it's a small industry small scene so probably everybody knows about this guy and how he runs and they probably all turn a blind eye because they think it's some talent you know these artistry matters and they want to get on guest lists it's a it's a very toxic industry like unfortunately the closer you get to people on the inside the closer you start to see that all the stuff that i like to see which is djs and stuff playing the boiler rooms the you know the festivals the raves the clubs it's all fun but behind the scenes behind the closed doors behind the curtain it's dark 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 self-blame was common among the women who came forward to ra they said that they felt that they were somehow at fault for not having done more to try to stop williams or for having given him the benefit of the doubt when the first exhibited behavior perceived as alarming the first girl in this particular article has to take a lot of personal responsibility the rest of them they're definitely 100 percent victims the first one though it's like bruh come on many of these women had met williams as fans of his music and felt that he abused his position of power this unbalanced dynamic has been a running theme um, demonstrated in many report cases. I think if you're a girl and you're reaching out to a DJ, unless you actually want to hook up, be very clear with your intentions. Do you want guest lists? Just get the guest list and keep it moving. Meeting people in private to just hang out and talk music is never going to... You just... No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. Um, especially alone. Like, huh? When Farah allegedly agreed to meet Williams at his studio, she said that she was under the false impression that she would be joining them to him to make music. <laughs> uh, fucking hell, man. You meet somebody alone in the studio and you think she's... Okay, cool, bro. Someone you don't know. She had attended one of his DJ sets a few months back and liked some of his Instagram stories. He responded by asking her if she was a singer and invited her to meet him in the studio the following night. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing that I get this opportunity. There were two other men at the studio when Farah arrived. She said hours went by and Williams had barely spoken to Farah, which I thought was a bit weird because I was invited to sing and do music. Okay, cool. So in this situation, he did manipulate the situation a bit, which is what abusers do come to the studio you think it's a bit sus but you go anyway you arrive he's actually in a studio session with actual musicians who happen to be two other guys you know he's not going to try anything in front of the other dudes plus he's ignoring you throwing you off so um at one point farah went to get a cup of tea and williams allegedly followed her downstairs she said he hugged her and she didn't reciprocate the hug farah recalled williams saying that he really liked her she thought it was odd as they hadn't really interacted <laughs> <laughs> sicko vibes bro i think i'm in love with you so like, we barely know each other <laughs> it's like what um later farah went downstairs to use the toilet she alleged that he when she came out williams was waiting outside the door whoa she said he told her to come with him to another part of the studio a small single person shaded booth for recording vocals farah allegedly alleged that williams undid her jeans put his hands inside her pants and started touching her as he began to masturbate she said it all happened so fast she didn't know how to react i didn't touch him i didn't even look at him i just froze completely like a statue <sighs> this guy man this guy like how do you not end up in prison that's a weird thing about sexual assaults like this isn't it how do people not end up in prison for stuff like this like how does it not happen how is it so hard? Why is it so hard to get people like this just put in prison? Because this is a that is a wild thing to do to somebody. Invite them to a studio under false pretenses, follow them around, and then literally jump on them and like like how does that not end up with you going to prison? It's just insane. Like it honestly is insane how people just don't get locked up for that. All you get is an is an article in RA. Okay, cool. It's a bit embarrassing. People know your secrets, but you're still out there free. You're still doing your thing. Like, how are you able to still be walking the streets when you did it like this? Marion said that she was blown away when Williams contacted her out of the blue on Instagram. She said he immediately told her he had autism. See what I told you earlier about people with this self-diagnosed thing or just pushing it as a personality trait and excusing their weird behavior. 
There's t- I see too much of it in the scene. People lying about being introverted when you're actually just a cunt. People lying about they have autism when you're actually just a rapist and a pedophile and a fucking abuser and shit. Nah, fuck all that shit. Work on yourself, improve yourself. Stop hiding behind these self-diagnosed things. Merrin alleged that Williams kept initiating phone sex and te- sexual texts, which made her uncomfortable, but she agreed to meet him. <laughs> again, again. The red flags were there. The red flags were there, right? Unreciprocated sexual texts and phone calls. But then I met him anyway. Sex with Williams was very abrupt. So they met and had sex immediately, even though she didn't want to engage in the sex. This is probably why the behavior has been continuing. Just, yeah, just bad. What's your thing called? Um, he's just getting bad, bad feedback loops. For his bad behavior, he's still getting the thing that he kind of wants, which obviously just keeps creating a cycle of abuse. Sex with Williams was very abrupt, Merrin says. I'm going to have to be explicit to explain, but he literally entered me without, I barely blinked. I wasn't really prepared. There was no foreplay or anything like that. He literally just pulled my knickers to the side and went straight away. She said that she felt anxious and used afterwards. Following the alleged encounter, she said William started to call her all hours of the night, wanting phone sex. She recalls text telling him his behavior was not okay. The last time she saw him, Mary said that Williams had been harassing her on the phone during the day. She was out with her an acquaintance and recalled Williams yelling down the phone, asking how long she'd be. She said she'd met him at his place. She said she'd meet him at his... She said she met him at his place where Williams rolled a joint in front of me, weed and tobacco, and smoked it. Mary said that Williams kept guiding her hand towards his penis and that she kept pulling it away. So after he has sex with you without asking your permission was harassing you over the phone being quite intense you then still decide to meet him at his house honestly the things people the things famous people get away with man they went to his bedroom Marion said that William started in his, uh, inhaling a balloon of nitrous oxide he then allegedly began to masturbate in front of her as she was lying on the bed she said he continued to take her hand and put it on his penis. She said that she tried to pull her hand away from his crutch and told him she didn't want to do anything sexual. Marion said that after she moved his, the, to the side of the bed to try to sleep, Williams rolled up on top of her and tried to initiate sex. She said she tried to show some affection to defuse the situation, but he allegedly held her arms down and pressed his forehead into hers so she couldn't move. Jesus Christ. I don't remember much after that, Merrin said. She felt as though she was tripping out the rest of the night in the morning. She collected her things and left. She recalled angrily telling Williams that she didn't want to see him again after that night. I've had a couple of years to process and move on, but it's been a dark journey. Ever since that day, I've not been the same mentally. Oh. There's a lot of dicey accounts in this article. A lot of dicey instances where you think where there's a red flag especially if you're a woman you should run never give people the benefit of the doubt but you also have to assume that this guy is a abuser abuser so he's had a lot of practice and knows how to you know guide people into doing the things that he wants them to do even though they don't want to do it so maybe in these situations unfortunately because of his history the girls didn't stand a fucking chance the moment he ensnared them he wasn't going to let go until he got what he wanted um but like I said, there needs to be some very honest conversations, grown-up conversations around consent, around hookup culture in general in nightlife, because I feel like a lot of this shit happens and all we get are articles. People don't go to prison. People don't get any punishment. People don't get dropped from labels. They're still on lineups. All this nonsense happens. So it keeps perpetuating this bad behavior. And it's really, really toxic. And the really funny thing about it, why it's so toxic and why I get really fucking annoyed about it, in this scene, there's like a weird thing. Like, if my little brothers try to go to some of these clubs that I go to, some of these nightclubs I go to, they wouldn't let them in because they don't look a certain way, right? They're not maybe white tinted enough, right? They don't have the right clothes on. They don't speak in the right way. So a lot of these pl- clubs and places would have suspicions about my little brothers who are fucking angels. But then they turn a blind eye or make excuses of people in their own scene who look like them, who are doing all this abusive shit. 
but yet they think people that look like me are the problem especially if you don't abide by their dress code you don't speak like they do you don't have the same mannerisms maybe you don't have the same way of life they look at you like you're a weirdo like you're gonna hurt the scene you're gonna hurt their safe space when the people that are actually fucking up their safe space are the ones that they put on pedestals are the ones that they make excuses for are the ones that they idolize are the ones that they look just like them it's honestly baffling really is fucking baffling how I will go to a fucking party somewhere, a rave somewhere, and I'll be questioned about why I'm going there. Hey, do you know why you're here? Who's playing? Like, I have to fucking apply to get in. I have to jump through hoops and shit because I look the way that I do. But if somebody like this rolls up with a rolled up joint and some Reeboks on and a pair of white socks and a fucking dangly earring and a fucking XL recording shirt or something, suddenly they're okay. Perfectly fine. Yeah, you go in. The, you know the do the abuse thing you hide it you turn a blind eye but me you have people following you around strip searching you way more intensely grilling you at the dance and at, at the door to the point where they maybe want to question your sexuality to see whether or not you're allowed to come in but the fucking hipster kids who maybe are fairer skinned are allowed in cool cool but the label, the industry and everybody else, they enable all this shit. They turn a blind eye to a lot of this stuff. These monsters are, I, I've always said and I'll maintain, monsters are always going to exist, unfortunately. Where there's good, there's always going to be evil. The problem, the, the situation is, is that we as a public, as people in general, we're the ones that have to call it out. We have to highlight it. We're the ones that have to call it out. But if you have people who are running cover, running defense, protecting these people, turning a blind eye to some of these things, gaslighting people, silencing people. This is why the abuse continues. This is why it continues. And what? Because they've got talent. Because they make good tunes. I don't really give a fuck. If you're an awful person, I don't really give a fuck what good tunes you make. Especially when you're raping people. Like, fuck, you know. And fans as well. People who look up to you, who idolize you, who, like, who love what you do. Taking advantage of that kind of relationship or that quote-unquote power dynamic. It's really deplorable. It really is fucking deplorable. So interested to see what happens off the back of this whether something will change i really do doubt it but you know who knows who bloody knows fingers crossed fingers and toes crossed <laughs>